Remind me, dear Lord, from where you have brought me and where I should have been. Don't forget a woman. Don't forget the nation of man. Dust and ashes. We need your hair. We can't do without you. We can't live without you. We can't succeed without you. We can't get to the kingdom of God without you. This very hour, this very moment, Lord, remind us, speak to us. Oh Lord, speak to us. Make us worthy for your kingdom. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take absolute control. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's be seated, those who are still standing. The message we want to consider now is holiness and heaven. Holiness and heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In other words, he saying, destruction, curses, are for those that are unholy, dirty in their heart, dirty in their mind, dirty in their soul, for they shall see Satan and hell. He said in the light of this part that blessed are they that are pure in their heart, for they are the only people that we see God, that we live with God, that we reign with God. In the light of this, he said in verse 48, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Angels are holy angels. He didn't say angels. Enoch was holy here before he died, before he was translated, because he didn't die, he went to heaven. Before this man Elijah, the prophet of fire, was catapulted, was taken alive to heaven. He never made use of these people as an example. He said, therefore, because of the necessity of reigning in heaven with God, therefore, because of the danger of eternal fire in the lake of fire, in the lake of, of, of fire, therefore, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect, perfect in words, perfect in attitude, perfect in thoughts, perfect in our interpersonal relationship with people. Be ye therefore perfect as you preach, as you teach, as you labor for the cause of the gospel. Be ye therefore perfect because of the final goal of entering heaven, living in heaven forever. Be ye therefore perfect because this is the qualification. This is the only way whereby you and I can reign with Christ. Be ye therefore perfect, even as our Father God in heaven is perfect. Paul came and spoke in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. He said, Hebrews, Jews, Jewish people, the church age, it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, judgment. Paul the Apostle said, don't believe the false doctrines of annihilation. 
It is appointed unto man who wants to die. And after this, judgment. Don't believe the doctrines of the people of the world saying God cannot be so wicked and throw his own people, his creatures, into hell. It is appointed unto every man on the face of the earth wants to die. And after judgment, no amount of prayer you pray for the dead. It doesn't change his eternal destiny. It is appointed unto man wants to die. If you die young and you die in sin, if you die old and you die in sin, if you die while you are studying and you die in sin, it is appointed unto man to die once, not twice. There is nothing like purgatory. After that is this judgment. And he spoke to us in Revelation chapter 21, verse 27. Revelation. Chapter 21. We read the last verse, verse 27. It says, And there shall in no wise, no matter what you do, you can't get crushed. It says, And there shall in no wise, no method, no techniques, no strategy you can apply. There shall in no wise enter into heaven. Anything that is defiled, preaching cannot make it if it is done in a holy lifestyle. Singing cannot make a way for you if it is done in immorality. There is nothing that you do. Tithing, offerings cannot help you, cannot help me, cannot help us to get to get crushed. And there shall be no wise. Enter into it anything that defiles. Think about anything in this world that defiles. Neither walketh or whatsoever walketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they which are written in the last book of life. We are talking about holiness. And heaven. Holiness and heaven. Holiness and heaven, how are they connected? Why do we have to place holiness side by side, heaven, and heaven side by side, holiness? It's because heaven is a place. And not just a place, but a holy place. It is because holiness is an attribute that will qualify you to enter heaven. Because heaven is a holy place. You can't go from one country to the other without your international passport and visa. Impossible. Before I came to this country, they checked my documents at the border. I presented my international passport. I presented that of Russia. They look at it, but they took it to a particular place and sat there for a long time, pressing one machine or the other, looking at it to consider the validity. To know if it is not fair. Do you have a fake certificate of salvation? Certificate of certification. Do I pay Holy Ghost baptism? We are talking about a very important subject many churches are shying away from. We are talking about a topic 
which many pastors they don't speak about. We are talking about a very important message that we matter in the last day that God will look at as he can say, look at my testimony. Why should I die now? Look at my testimony. I am a king in this land. I have power. I have authority given to me to take other people's land and property, to take other people's wife, to take other people's money. I have all those opportunities, but I never misuse my power. Power given to me. I never abuse the privilege given up to me. Look at my testimony. I'm not ready to die. God looked at his record. He said, I said, go back and tell him he's not going to die again. Holiness and heaven. What is holiness? That will make us to describe what holiness is all about. Description and benefits of holiness. The description and benefits. I will also look at people that prayed, that prayed for holy life and God's holiness in their life before they left this world. Let's go together to Psalm 15. And let us read verses 1 to 5. Psalm 15. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? I need to know what a big question, what an important question that this man, King David, asked from God, Lord, tell me, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who is qualified to dwell in thy holy hill? I've seen kings and princes. I've read stories about kings and princes. I've read stories about other people. I've seen religious people. I've seen righteous people. Tell me directly from you. Who shall abide? Who shall live with you in your kingdom? God gave him the answer by the Holy Ghost. He that walketh uprightly walk is a firm word. Walk, walks, walk. He that walketh uprightly. Is upright in his work. Is not hypocritical in his work. He works with other people outside uprightly. He works with people in the place of work uprightly. He works with other people in the church uprightly. He's upright in his work. No deception, no guile. No pollution, no defilement. I walk it with his hand. I walk it righteousness. He demonstrates righteousness as he walks in his place of work, as he learns in his place of study. Walk it righteousness and speak it the truth in his heart. He speaks the truth in his heart at all times. God is speaking. Jesus is speaking. The Holy Ghost is speaking. He said, He that backbited not with his tongue. Somebody spoke to somebody here. And the person said, What you said, I'm going to tell the pastor. He didn't come to tell me first. He said, what you said now, I'm going to tell the pastor, that's righteousness. I don't want you to feel that this is my biting, my friend. I don't want to feel that I'm slighting you. I don't want you to think that why did you say this? He, he made him to know in advance that this statement should have made now. I'm going to tell the pastor. 
We are talking about holiness and heaven. And speaketh the truth in his heart, and backbited not with his tongue. When you speak at the back of somebody, when you backstab somebody, when you destroy the image of another person, you want to gain the favor of the leader, of the pastor, of the director, of the professor, of the friend. He that backbited not with his tongue, not twenty evil to his neighbor. Not taken up a reproach against his neighbor. We are talking about holiness. We are describing holiness as God has put it in the Bible. As we interrelate, as we go to the prayer, prayer, prayer meetings, as we go to prayer practice, as we go for one meeting or the other. He said, nor dwell evil to his neighbor, his neighbor, nor talk, take up a reproach against his neighbor. Who are you talking about then? Forget about him. Forget about her. In whose eyes a foul person is contained, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He respects them. He loves them. He prays for them. He helps them in whichever way it is possible. He that swallowed to his own heart, this is the direction I'm going, and changes not. He that says, this is what I'm going to do. I am converted now. You didn't allow me to die in sin. How many people that have gone into hell, they never had this opportunity that has been given unto me. I'm going to serve you till the end of my life in holiness and righteousness. He that changes not. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to do your will. He that changes not. Because of the environment changes because of he has relocated because of employment opportunity overseas because of what advantage or the other he changes not like Daniel did not change like Joseph did not change he that put it not out his money to use free nor taken the word against the innocent Bribery and corruption, giving right to the wrong, giving wrong to the right. He that dwells these things, every read the rest, shall, shall not never be moved. Speak louder. Shall never be moved. Are you sleeping? Shall shall never be moved. You will never be moved. Yes. The Almighty God is describing holiness to us. And he also says something about it in chapter 24, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 24. Let's go there together. Verses 3 and 4. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Why was it repeated? The psalmist said, it in chapter 15. He's repeating it in chapter 24. He said, Who shall ascend? Who will take part in the rapture? Who will be among the resurrected people to meet Jesus in the air? Who shall ascend into the heel of the Lord? And who shall stand? In his holy place, who is qualified to stand in his holy place? Who is qualified to dwell in his holy place? Who is qualified to sing among the saints in his holy place? He that hath clean hands, that's salvation. Esthana. Your mouth is free. Your fingers are free. Your toes are free. Your body is free. You don't use any of your body as an instrument of unrighteousness. He that 
that has clean hands and then and a pure heart. Don't stop at salvation. Don't stop at external cleansing, external holiness. Purity of heart is a necessity. It is a must that you are pure, that you are holy in the heart, that the Arabic nature is uprooted. The tendency to go and see, to go back into evil, is rooted out of you. Jealousy is no longer there. Heavy is no longer there. Touchiness is no longer there. Withdrawing your share because you are rebuilt, because you are corrected, is no longer there. You are humble. You are gentle. And you are peaceful. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, things that are vanity. You know, when a person dies, all his glory is gone, all his beauty is gone, all he has, all that is holy out is a coffin. How that is going on? All those things that that person has got him. Clothes, many shoes, many keys, many cars, many houses. None of them will be pairing with him. We will be pairing with her. He said that those who have not lifted up their, poor, their, their soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. God understands. And it's a liar. And it's a deceiver. The qualification, the description of holiness. The benefits of holiness. Let's see. Isaiah chapter 6. Open your Bible to Isaiah chapter 6. I read from verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, I and lifted up, and a train lifted the temple. He had this opportunity, vision. He didn't see God literally. Vision given to him. Above each stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. If he didn't see, he wouldn't have mentioned even the numbers. It was very clear that he saw. Covered his face, and with twain, he covered his feet, and with twain, he did fly. And Lord cried unto another. He heard their voices and said, Holy, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole heart is full of his glory. And the pulse of the dog move at the voice of him that cried, he heard. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, he saw his wretchedness. He was a prophet, messianic prophet, powerful prophet. He started when in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 5. When he got to chapter 6, he had mingled with the people of the land. They have defied him. They have transferred mormonium to him. They have trans transferred barbarity unto him. He, he has started misusing his tongue contrary to the will of God. He saw he was not qualified. What a message of love from God this evening. You are not Isaiah, but you are hearing what I've been penned down for you and I to see and to read. Then said, Ah, if this is heaven, I'm not qualified to be there. You know, is every place where you, 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 you yourself you wish begin to use your mouth to condemn yourself. 
You can't hide. Nobody can hide. You are the one that you said, I have adopted a number of times. I stole money from the church a number of times. Somebody stealing church money. In this our church. Went to the bank. And where the accountant was busy, he drove away the car with the money. Think about it. Think about that. The boy was arrested. Think about that. The junior brother of Judas is carried. Look at what the Lord is saying. He said, Woe is me, for I am untorn, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes. I have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. I am not qualified to be there. Prophet. Prophet, messianic prophet. His prophecy while on the dot. Surely, he had poured our grace. He had carried away our souls. We did not see him speaking. Speak of God and of religion. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Jesus had not been born. Thousands of years before the arrival of our Savior, he spoke in advance about healing. You can get healing in advance. This one said, with all those prophecies, he said, I'm not qualified. He opened up, he confessed before God. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a large coal in his hand, which had taken with his tongue, with the tongue from up the altar, and laid it upon my mouth, and said, No, because you owned up, no, because you didn't hide yourself, no, because you confessed your sins, no, because you have seen your wretchedness, no, because you have spoken the truth. That is what the Senate told him. He said in verse 7, and he laid it upon my mouth, and though this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sins have been put on that wall. Paul, when you have constipation, and your tummy is making noise, and you are restless, then you go and use something that will purge you. So that those things troubling your stomach will be pushed out of you. That is what the blood of Jesus does in the life of the sanctified. See, verse 7, verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Was he not sent before? Listen to me. Was he not sent before? Was he not a messianic prophet? He was. He was. God has said, I think you are now qualified. If you had died at the end of chapter 5, you wouldn't have come to heaven. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Now that you have pushed me, now that I am holy and sanctified, here am I. Send me. We are talking about the description and benefits of holiness. Let's see First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. We read verse 10. Ye are witnesses. Pastor. Can you stand before the church, before your choir members, before all the members of the church, choristers, choir leader, can you stand boldly before the members of the choir in the church? Can you declare, can you say my hands are clean, my heart is clean, my heart, my life is clean, like Paul Apostle, he said, ye are witnesses? Not only you, and God also. 
God who sees into the darkest part of man's life, and God also, how holy and justly and unblameably, we, not only me, me, I and my companions, we behave ourselves among you. Come and witness against me if I've stolen your church money. Come and witness against me if I've taken anybody's wife. Come and witness against me if I've done any evil, if I've slandered anyone. If you had any evil report about me, come on, witness against me. He are witnesses, not only you, even God of heaven is also a witness. This is holiness. Where do you stand? Where do I stand? Let's go to the Old Testament in 1 Samuel chapter 12, reading from verse 1. It says, And Samuel said, Unto all Israel, behold, have akin unto your voice, in all that ye said unto me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walketh before you, and I'm whole and grey headed. What a lesson! He started serving the Lord from a three or four, I can't tell exactly the year, but it was after he had been weaned. That the mother took her to Shiloh, took him to Shiloh. He said, I started from my youthful age. And now I'm grey headed. And behold, my sons are with you. And I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. I never backpedaled. I never applied the first gear. I was always in the temple. Read the work of God in a circuit. Behold, I am here. I'm about to go home. I'm about to go to God in heaven. Witness against me. And before the anointed, whose oars have I taken? Holiness. Whose oars have I taken? Holiness. Of whom have I defrauded in business? Holiness, who have I oppressed? Holiness, or of whose hand have I received any bride to blind my eyes to perform justice and judgment in the house of God? Tell me, members of the church, who have I oppressed since I've been a pastor over you in this location? Since I've been the choir master in this location? Since I've been a leader in the church in this location? Witness against me. I'm about to relocate. I'm about to go to another location. I'm about to go because I've been transferred. Witness against me. Whose horse have I taken? Whose wife have I defiled? Whom have I oppressed? Who have I methodically invited into immorality? What was the answer of the people? He said, tell me if I'm taking bread from anyone to apply my eyes, and I will restore, because I know it will hinder me from getting to heaven. I remember the founder of the redeemed Christian Church of God, the man of God blessing in heaven now. Many years ago, before he died, he went to a particular church because one of their members crossed over to the redeemed church from apostolic faith. It's not a hiding history. You can go into the net to see there. And the man went there because the man that crossed to that other church died in the redeemed. And then somebody came from apostolic faith and said some things. Oh, maybe he's the one who says some things. And then, years gone, he was about to die. God said, you have to go to a policy place and settle. Ah. He's in the net. He went back to a policy place and declared what he said some years back. Before he slept and went to heaven. Before they put it in the net, our own father and the Lord, many years ago, mentioned it in one of his messages. We are talking about the qualification for heaven. See what the Lord is talking to us. What is holiness? H stands for holiness. There's no doubt about that. 
It also stands for humility. Are you humble? After doing something for the glory of God, do you return the glory to God? After being applauded and praised by people, do you say it is not by my mind, nor by my power, but by the grace of God? Humility. Honesty. Are you honest? In business? In church services? In your academics? Are you honest? Are we honest? Are you honest to your wife? Are you honest to your husband? Are you married and you are still looking at other men outside or other women outside? Are you honest? Are you heavenly minded? Or you are worldly minded? We are talking about what holiness is. Are you hospitable? Hospitality? Are you helpful to other people? Are you hopeful? Holiness. Then letter O stands for obedience without obstinacy. You are obedient to the leadership of the church. You don't say you are older. You are more experienced. You know more than, more than me. More than me. Obedience without obstinacy. Air is law without lust. You love one another. But you love with ulterior motive. You love him with ulterior motive. To propose to him, to entice him, to make him to show interest in you. God sees your heart. God knows our heart. God knows our standing thoughts, our rising thoughts, our sleeping thoughts, our waking thoughts, our walking thoughts. He knows before that thoughts come from your heart. He sees it in advance. God, love, not lost. Holiness is law, agape law, sacrificial law, enduring law. Not lost under the place of the world. Not lost under the opposite sex. It's not lost after the opposite sex. I integrity without infidelity. Integrity. You have integrity. Your wife can vouch for you. Your husband can vouch for you. Your parents can fight for you. Your pastor can fight for you without infidelity, without corruption, or intemperate. Intemperate. You are not forcing out like a volcano with anger. An angry man is a candidate of hell. You are not intemperate. But temperate. That's holiness. Newness of heart without naughtiness in the heart. Newness of heart without naughtiness. Holiness is empathy without envy. Endurance without envy. You are enduring. You don't say, she got this, she got that, he got this, he got that. You endure your situation. You don't because of that, mumble against God. Why not me? Why she? Why not me? Why he? You need to go to Calvary. Submission without stubbornness. You are submissive to the word of God. You are submissive to the leadership of the church. You are submitting to the prompting of the Holy Ghost. Submission without stubbornness. Sacrificial service without selfishness. You are not serving for selfish motives. You are not playing instrument of music because of any selfish motives. No. Service without suspicion. You are serving the church 
and you are not suspecting this, you are not suspecting that, you are free from suspicion. It is purity of heart that can do that. We have seen the description and benefits of holiness in the life of Paul, in the life of Samuel. Isaiah was purged. He was chosen to preach the gospel. Who shall we sign? Who will go for us? Ezekiel was healed. When God looked at his credentials, spiritual credentials, his holiness, his truthfulness, his faithfulness, 15 more years was added unto him. What about the danger of sinful, hypocritical, and evasive lifestyle? Danger of sinful, hypocritical, and evasive lifestyle. Let's go to First Samuel chapter 15. First Samuel chapter 15. We want to see the danger. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be the king over his people, to be the pastor over the church, to be a national coordinator over the church, to be a, a, a national vassal over the church. God has chosen me, told me, go and anoint him, go and anoint her, make her the head of the choir, make him the head usher, make him this, make him that. This assignment, this ministry had been right from Bible days. Go and anoint Saul. Now therefore, now therefore, now therefore, an assignment has come for the fulfillment of your ministry. Now therefore, acting down unto the voice of the words of the Lord, not me, but the word of God. Thus says the Lord, Saul, I remember that which commanded thee to Israel, how they led way for him in the way. When he came up from Egypt, I remember. God will remember. God is not forgetful. Oh, mommy has forgotten. Daddy has forgotten. Oh, thank God. The lecturer has forgotten. Oh, thank God. My old man has forgotten. Oh, praise God. My wife has forgotten. It is your mom or your wife or your dad or your professor or your boss that can forget because they are human. But God will always remember because he has a record. He keeps record of evil that you do. He keeps record of your holiness. He keeps record of your activities, of your character, of your behavior, of your love, of your hatred, of your bitterness, of your forgiveness. He takes record. He remembers what Amalek did. He now said, go and smite Amalek. Destruction is for the wicked. Go and smite Amalek. And utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not all. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass, and so gathered the people. Praise God. He gave immediate response and so gathered the people together and numbered them in Tel Aviv. 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah and so came to a city of Amalek and led wait in the valley. He obeyed, praise God. But let's see what follows. And so said unto Canaanites who were living among the Amalekites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites. Lest I destroy you with them. For ye show kindness. Are you kind hearted? For ye show kindness. Are you lovable? Do you love people? For showing kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites. The rapture will take place and take us away from this world, from among the Amalekites, from among the Philistines, from among the Canaanites, from among the children of the devil. 
the rapture will take place. The righteous will never be destroyed with the wicked. Impossible. The Lord is saying to you, keep serving him, keep preaching the gospel, keep living right, keep living straight, keep walking the work of righteousness, because a day is coming. When evacuation will take place, you will be there and will be there. Oh. Amen. Amen. We shall all be there in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so those people came out and so smote the Amalekites from Havila. Or did that comment to show that is over against Egypt? And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. And utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people speared Hagar and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the butlings and of the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them but everything that was vile and refuse that they destroyed utterly. So, if it is possible for you to hear me in hell, can you please tell me your relationship with Hagar, the king of the Amalekites? Can you please tell me whether God specifically told you, spare their king? Can you please tell me whether Hagar was an Israelite himself? Was he your sin or business partner? That you don't want to pass with him? Was he your sin or business partner? And is maybe it's your sugar daddy. Maybe he's being helpful to you in your academics. And you don't want to destroy him. You don't want to break his heart. You don't want to part away with him. King Saul was your relationship with King Agar better and greater and sweeter and richer than your relationship with God who appointed you a pastor for the church. Than your relationship with God who appointed you to be the king of Israel. Why did you do this King Saul? Even spoke hypocritically. See what the Bible tells us in the next part. Look at what the Bible says. In the next part. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It's repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he's come back from following me, and I have not performed my commandment. And it grew Samuel, and it cried unto the Lord all night. Church, see here. Please, let's be careful. God sees. He knows. He hears. By him, according to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 3, by him, actions are weighed. He knows the thought and the intents of the heart of all men. Beware. Samuel didn't know. You can't know except God speaks to you. You can't see except God reveals to you. You can't understand except God teaches you. He revealed to he spoke to Samuel. He said, It repented me that I put Saul, the people that I meant for destruction, he speared them, he speared their king. What are you sparing? What are you sparing? What are you sparing? Close your eyes now. Don't stop. Just close your eyes. And think within two seconds and a minute. What are you supposed to destroy that you are sparing? What are you supposed to cast away from you and you are keeping? Open your eyes. He said, as he came to me, he said to me, he said, Blessed be the name of the Lord. I have performed what God told me to do. Ah, Saul. So, you are speaking like that before a prophet. He knew it in advance. Not only that, practically he had. He said, if you have performed the commandment, whatever the noise of animals I'm hearing, 
Ah, as for that, we have brought that one for to sacrifice to your God somewhere, to your God, not his God. It's very clear. He said, we have brought it to sacrifice to your God. Then he said, to obey is better than sacrifice. Tell your neighbor, to obey is better than sacrifice. Please speak louder. In fact, the Bible says even disobedience and rebellion is as witchcraft. They are in the same category. They got the devourers. Yeah. What are we talking about? The danger, the peril, the consequence of sinful, hypocritical life. It was hypocritical. It was invasive. It was, it was, he said it was the people that brought them. Who was the king? So, are you not in total control? It's very, very dangerous to do this. Make up your mind that you are going to destroy anything that the Holy Ghost has been speaking about in your life. Say, destroy this. Destroy this. That's why you are not making progress spiritually. Go against this. Cancel this in your life. Make sure. Because it's very, very dangerous. Hebrews 12, from verse 14. Paul said, follow peace with all men. Everybody shout, all men. All men. Louder, please. All men. Louder, please. All men. Good men. Bad men, wicked men, all men, friendly or hostile, follow peace, make peace, because nothing that is divided will enter into heaven. Hypocritical life will not make you to enter into heaven. What do we mean by invasive? When you are supposed to say, Yes, you are, you are trying to judge away from the truth. That's our holy lifestyle. When you are asked a question and you are trying to not, you are running away from hitting the nail on the head, that is being effacing. He said, Praise God. We have turned the will of God. We have obeyed the Lord. We have killed and destroyed the people of the Amalekites. When he has not done so, I am saved. I am sanctified. And when you have not been sanctified, I am baptized in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost turns in your mouth. It's been taught to you. What, why are you evading away from God? He says, danger of sinful, hypocritical, and defensive life. Last point. Deliverance from all barriers to entering heaven. Deliverance. Or dealing with all barriers. You have to deal with it. I have responsibility. You have responsibility. God has made us a free moral agent to do as it pleases us. But he said, how I play with you. Moses said to Israel, choose life. Deal with all barriers standing on your way. Deal with it. Deal with it. Destroy it. Any connection that is not supposed to be get disconnected. Any friendship or relationship that is simple and carnal. If you're not ready to marry, don't go into a relationship. Don't do it. It will make you to fall. It will make you to sin. Deal with all barriers that are hindering you from progressing spiritually, from mounting up with wings like eagles, from pleasing God from time to time. Deal with it. Write him and say, no, we are no longer going to continue. Why? I love you. You want to break my heart. You want to kill me. I'm dying now. I'm... 
If you want to die, die. I want to live for God. I want to suffer in holiness and righteousness. And it's a lie. He's deceiving you because you are not in the same country. He's far away from you. He's doing something else. And you cannot know on the, on the screen. You cannot know in the net. You, even if you are standing face to face, you cannot know that you have just finished with another woman or another man. Deal with all barriers to empty heaven. Deal with it. Second Chronicles. Chapter 7. Let us read verse 14. Or beginning from verse 13. And read from verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. The Lord will appear to you. Yeah. Yeah. And said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. I've chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. And because of that, give any time I shut heaven. Because of your idolatrous lifestyle, because of your wickedness, because of your sinful lifestyle, because of your hypocritical life, because of being a person, because of being sinful, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locust to defraud the land because of the sin, if I send pestilence among my people, my own people, my people, talking to the church, my people, talking to God's people, children of God, among my people, because of their sin, and I punish them. If my people, he's not talking to the outsiders, if my people want to get to the kingdom of God and live with me forever, if my people want me to answer their prayers any time they call, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Everybody say humble. humble. Everybody say humble. humble. It takes humility to be saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost. Shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He just say. If they humble themselves and pray and seek my face and continue in their wicked ways, no. And turn. Hey, what say? Turn. Punch your neighbor and say, Turn. Speak louder to him or her. And turn. The Lord is speaking. And turn from their wicked ways and stop immoral lifestyle and stop backbiting. And stopping fire and pain, then we die. That's the condition. Solomon have had your prayers, but there's a condition to fulfill. Solomon have had your prayer. You have to look at the standard of the word of God. Solomon have had your prayer. I so much delight in you. He knows the he knows that even Solomon himself will later run after thousand, a thousand of a woman or seven hundred women and three hundred concubines. He knows. He told him, if you turn and stop being wicked, then will I hear from heaven. Look at what we read in verse 2. He said, I've heard your prayers. Everything is fine. Anybody that called upon me in this house, I will answer. But there's a condition. The condition is, you humble yourself, the condition is you pray, you seek God's face, and you talk from your wicked ways. Then we go here from heaven and we forgive your sins, their sins, and we heal their land. We can see how to deal with all barriers. Remember, we spoke about Peter. What he remembered, what Jesus said in advance, he went out and cried bitterly. He was restored immediately. That 
is what God wants. Don't carry long in the territory of the devil. Don't allow the devil to torment you to death. Don't allow them to pluck out your two eyes. Don't allow them to take your ministry from your hand. Don't allow them to destroy your future and God's plan for your life. Prepare immediately. Don't waste time. Begin to make up your mind now where you are seated that as soon as we finish this program, I'm going to write him, I'm going to write her, I'm going to tell him this, I'm going to tell her this. We have not even been very sure that it is God's will to marry this man or to marry this woman. You have to do something. Let us see your works as he saw the works of the people of New Navy. Do like Isaiah and expose yourself. And reveal yourself and make God to know what He already knew about you. Search your heart and live it now. Is it all well? Search your heart and live now. Is it all well? Stop calling evil good. Stop calling good evil. Oh, it's cool. It's okay. This is all right. God cannot because of this get me. This is fine. This is okay. After all, we are still going to marry ourselves. Stop calling evil good. Stop calling good evil. Spare not King Aga in your life. Don't spare him. You know, someone says, bring Aga here. He came delicately. He said, I believe the sting of death is past. He said, no, you are going to die. Someone killed him. Spear not King Agar Sly. Don't spear him. Step out of worldly people and worldliness. Step out of worldliness. Step out of worldliness and worldly people. Seek the Lord why there is hope. Seek Lord why there is hope. Submit to the Holy Spirit. Probing ministry in your heart. He's probing your heart. He's talking to you. He's saying you are the one they are talking to. He's saying you are the one they are talking to. Listen to him. Submit to the Holy Ghost. Probing ministry in your heart. Secure your never dying soul from entering eternal lake of fire. I repeat, search your heart and life now. Is it all well? Stop calling evil good and stop calling good evil. Spare not King Agar's life, destroy him, any anger in your life. Step out of boldness and worldly people. Seek the Lord why there is hope, why there is hope, why he may be found. Submit to the Holy Spirit probing ministry in your heart. Secure your never dying soul from it entering eternal lake of fire. Church, the Lord has spoken to all of us, including myself, about holiness and heaven. You can't say you have not heard. You can't say you don't know what is holiness. You can't deny it tomorrow. This message is a witness against the preacher and the audience. Let's rise up. This is the time to talk to your flesh. Don't kill me. Leave me alone. This is the time to, to really make up your mind and pray as a God. Make me holy, wash me clean. I want to be holy for heaven. I want to be a candidate for heaven. I want to be qualified for heaven. Open your heart to me. Open your heart to me. Don't pretend. Pray. Don't pretend, but pray.
He has just seen you to be a pastor. How are you fulfilling your ministry? How are you fulfilling your ministry? Are you faithful?
believe the qualification to get there is holiness within and without. Speak louder. Yes. yes. Raise up your hand, all of you, to God. And say, Lord, anytime you come, can't be worthy. Push my heart now. Purify my heart. I surrender unto you. I surrender my will. I surrender. I surrender. Make up your mind. Make up your mind that as of tonight, they are going to pop up. They are going to destroy others. They are going to make their way around. When I see for restitution, they are going to do restitution. So that we can make heaven. So that we don't see the pain, preach the pain, keep people in pain, labor in pain. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we are all raising up our hands unto you. Yes, Lord. We have had your word undiluted. We have seen the truth with our own eyes. We have read it together with the pastor. We are asking you that all those who are here, including myself, none of us will be left behind at the rapture in the mighty name of Jesus. I am praying as many as are confessing and repenting and saying, henceforth they will stop. Grant them that grace in Jesus' name. I pray you have mercy upon all attendees here Amen. and forgive all sins in the mighty name of Jesus. And sports, we pray that the life of our people will never remain the same. And sports, their language will not remain the same. And sports, their appearance will not remain the same. And sports, their wrong interpersonal relationship with other people will not remain the same. Amen. Everything will become new in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you Lord for the answer. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen.